All right, so one of the cool things I do like about the fact that Nike is updating all of their shoes and I always have a terrible time pulling the box open. They're updating a lot of their shoes with these boxes that are meant to be used as both shoe box and shipping box. Now, a lot of people don't like that and they will send these inside of another box, but they also provide you the opportunity to do what? Resale this box and ship it back if you have to return it. And that's a good thing because it kind of reduces waste, but not really. I love that it says this is a shoe box, but it's more than that. This is an all-in-one storage shipping and return box, which helps reduce the amount of material we use. Now, it, Nike is sending out 150,000 shoes a day. Nothing they do is going to reduce the waste. <laughs> so it's like, okay, we got this amazing shoe that we just created for running. Uh, people don't take us as seriously anymore. Um, so we're going to hook you with this new uh, st sustainability push. And this shoe is $250. It's $250. But I wanted to make sure you saw the inside of it because my QC stamp is blurred. I won't be able to give that to you. There is a QC sticker at 23-1 on the inside. But... It's an amazing shoe, man. I, you know, and that's not me just saying that. My daughter has a pair, and she actually has the next percent, and she uses a lot of different shoes with the Zoom X. She loves Nike running shoes. Uh, that's primarily because I can get them for her. And, you know, yeah. anyway, uh, let's keep rolling into this, man. I want to get to the close-up because there's a lot of cool cues on this. But it's Flyknit. Funny enough, I'm actually wearing the old-school Flyknit racer, and... Um, I love this shoe to death. It's one of my favorite shoes of all time. Um, this model is nothing like the carbon, I mean the um, Flyknit Racer that I have on at all. This is not a Flyknit Racer. This is a women's Nike Zoom Vaporfly Nix Percent 3. It has a full length carbon fiber plate to give you a great amount of rebound in the outsole. It's going to compress fast, but the Zoom X is a fantastic cushion. Nike makes a great running shoe. I'm not going to pretend like they do. My biggest qualm with Nike is the fact that typically the toe box is not asymmetric and it's not wide enough. So if you get a company like Altra, right? Um, Altra makes this fantastic wide toe box that allows your toes to splay a lot more. Nike tends to be a little bit more narrow and sometimes the drop isn't that great. Now, interestingly enough on this shoe, the drop is not bad at all, even though it looks like this really big, huge cushion it is not much of a drop. Uh, anatomically correct is what they kind of label this shoe as, but you can see that it's Zoom X and it has the fly plate, which is made out of carbon fiber. At 250 bucks, it's expensive. Let me give you the color here. It's hyper pink, black, laser, orange. The style code is DV4130600. Uh, won't get into, uh, yeah, you know what? I will give you made in China, uh, dates of production. Let's see. That's 0928.22 to 0104.23. The small code is QD. I'm not touching on all of those small kind of points of detail because there's no on foot for this. Uh, let's see. The original super shoe designed for podiums and PRs built to world standards. Nike has these amazing little details on their shoes, but Flyknit, Flyplate. What is that on the bottom? 48.5 grams, Zoom X rubber, 19.1 grams, fly plate, 14.5 grams. Makes this thing stupid light. And you do have that classic kind of Nike waffle sole on the bottom here. But uh, you do have an asymmetrical lacing system. And I think I said that, you know, asymmetric, I was talking about the toe box, but you do have the lacing system, which is better for lockdown. But it's a beautiful little shoe, man. The insole does not come out. If you're wondering, wondering if it does, the insole does not come out. But super lightweight shoe has its origins in the Flyknit Racer, the one that I have on my foot right now. And this is a true racing shoe. And Nike continues to update it and kind of make it better for runners. What type of runners is this for? Marathon. <laughs> Anything that has a carbon fiber plate, um... If you're a heavier guy like me, that carbon fiber pushes back and it does give you some rebound. But it's for runners, man. It's for serious runners. If you're just starting out, man, I would, and I know I'm not sponsored by Nike, so I can say this. I would start out with a shoe from like Brooks or, um, gosh, man, 
Asics even, um, something a lot cheaper. $250 is an expense. You know, but when you get serious about your running and you're starting to get into your longer distances, you want shoes like these because they're so lightweight, your feet breathe, um, you know, the carbon fiber is perfect for running long distances because you got great energy return. The Zoom X, great energy return. But if you're, if you're getting this just to style and profile, do you. I'm not mad at you. If you're a beginning runner, though, no. You're a beginning runner, no. If you're a bigger guy like me, style, yeah. Um, running, no. I almost would say don't go with, you know, a lot of cushion in some instances because it can give you even though there's a carbon fiber plate in here and it does work as far as stability but if you're a bigger runner i don't run a lot of miles i do a more sprint work and things that are about muscle building than i do distance and cardio and things like that but beautiful shoe though man i can't front beautiful shoe i'm going to get to that close-up so you can see it and wrap this video up close up so your Nike Zoom Vaporfly Next Percent 3, like I said, features a fly net upper. Here on the tongue, you know that's for racing. And then it's fly net Nike Vaporfly 3. And then it's just the race checks on the side. But I'll give you a look at that fly plate underneath so you can see the bottom of the shoe. And here is where you have the weights of the different materials to tell you that it is one of the lightest shoes on the market. Once again, I do not recommend this if you are a novice runner. I am not recommending this. So that's not a knock on Nike. That's saying if you're just um, a casual runner, meaning you probably get in three to five miles a week. Um, go with a shoe that's a lot less expensive and a lot more supportive. Now, even though this does have a carbon fiber plate and it has the Zoom X cushion, it's for people who are much stronger runners. I do love this, though. On the inside of it, you see that padding that's around on the inside? I love that because it used to be that you could get some Nike shoes that would rub on your Achilles and it wouldn't feel good. So imagine running, you know, 26 miles in a shoe that was rubbing like that. It would drive you crazy. All right. But that is it. Did I give you a medial shot of the shoe? I definitely want to give you a medial shot of it. But if you are a serious runner, man, you have to contemplate buying it. Even at $250, you have to contemplate buying it. There isn't a single carbon fiber sneaker that comes in at that price, the only brand is 99 products that has a full carbon fiber plate on the inside of it that comes in at $120. That's the only sneaker that I've seen. And Antiques, which is a, a muscle runner. It's a training shoe more than it is a running shoe. This is a true running shoe. And it's incredible. It's an awesome shoe. But if you're a serious runner, then that, yeah, definitely compare it to other serious running shoes. But if you're just a casual runner, not this not this, okay? Um, something else. Beautiful shoe, though. I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.